Hey there guys, thanks for tuning in. So we made it to 500,000 subscribers. That's half a million people who chose to follow this channel. I just want to start off by of course saying thank you so much to all of you. All of you who've subscribed, all of you who leave comments, who pester other YouTubers and influencers to feature me on their channels, who leave likes, support the program. All of it is massively appreciated. It's humbling and I can't thank you enough. This is literally a dream come true for me. Ever since I was a little kid, I always dreamed of becoming the next Jackie Chan or a superhero or an action star. And whilst I'm not doing any of those things, I've managed to find a way to kind of embody some of those same ideas and make it into a real job, which I just can't believe I get to do. It's so cool. And the fact that you guys watch and subscribe and follow along is mind boggling. So yeah, I can't thank you enough and I'm just eternally grateful. With that said, I thought like last time, seeing as it was quite successful last time, I'd do another Q&A to celebrate this milestone. I asked some of you guys in the YouTube post to share some of your questions and you guys did that, so thank you very much. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. So the first question coming up comes from Gabrielle Gonzalez and that says, Hey Adam, do you have any exercises you use to help you sleep? Should we walk more or train differently to induce better sleep for the night? Also, congrats on 500,000, man. It's great to see you reach this milestone. Thank you very much, Gabrielle. And all I'll say is for sleep, my number one recommendation by far is to use CBT, that's Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. So not physical exercise specifically, although of course that can help with your sleep, but just learning this little bit of metacognition, thinking about the way you're thinking. And I actually made a whole video on CBT in the past. It's several years old now, but it's still one I'm proud of. So check it out and you'll learn about that there. Basically, you need to convince yourself to relax rather than fretting about not getting to sleep. And this helps you to get to sleep faster and much deeper. And as someone who used to have trouble sleeping ever since I started using this trick, I've had no problems whatsoever. So I hope that helps. Lucifer Fanbase, who seems to be having something of an existential crisis, says, our actions are very minuscule and tiny and have almost a zero impact when the size of the universe is taken in. So what motivates you to get up every day and grind? What is your motivation? By the way, love your channel. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I wouldn't say I really grind. Um, I'm not a grinder. I don't have this grind mentality. I spend a lot of time chilling out lately playing Elden Ring. I watch really rubbish TV with my wife and I have no regrets about doing it. The answer to your question of where I get my impetus, even in the face of my utter insignificance, is that it's kind of like an impulse. I'm not necessarily even always working towards a bigger goal. I just have to make these videos. I can't really explain it. I love movement and I love action and it's something that's it's physical as much as emotional. And I don't know why or where it comes from, but when I was a tiny kid, I loved Sonic the Hedgehog because he ran and jumped and collected rings. Then I loved Jackie Chan because he did stunts and jumped. And I love fitness because it's physical and it involves movement. I just feel compelled to work out in these ways. I feel compelled to make these videos to the point where I've been doing this for over 10 years, uh, maybe 12 years by now. And it only really started making any profit in the last few years, the last three years. So I actually was doing it just out of pure weird impulse to do this, even though it wasn't terribly convenient. I didn't always have time and it wasn't going anywhere, but I just did it anyways. And it's awesome that's become my job because now I get to get paid for doing the thing that I most love to do and I'm most passionate about. And that's why to me it's so awesome and mind blowing that all of you watch and follow because I'm just having a blast doing this thing that I enjoy and it's taken off, which is wonderful. I can't really pronounce this one. It's a Y-N-G-H-U-C-H. So, Inguch says, have you got any short or long-term injuries and how do you deal with them and do all the different exercises that you do? And the answer to that is yes, I have lots of short and long-term injuries. As I talked about in the previous Q&A, I completely broke my wrist in half, so that's a long-term injury. I also broke my ankle, as I talked about recently in my ankle training video. A tendon actually pulled a bit of bone away from the rest of the bone. It didn't completely detach, but it like cracked and came out a little bit, which obviously was a problem. Um, I have had tennis elbow recently. I've had jumper's knee recently. Fortunately, that actually provides an impetus for my training and it helps me to become a better coach because then I learn why it happened and how to prevent it happening in future and how to fix it. If any of you have watched my video on my recovery protocol, then you'll know that I think a lot of these injuries that we assume are lifelong can actually be healed with the right exercise and training. And it's when we stop completely to protect the injury that often they get worse and we develop compensatory movement patterns. I've cured the tennis elbow, I've cured the jumper's knee, 
My back very rarely goes out anymore, if at all. I might have fixed that permanently. So it's not about stopping training. It's about finding ways to work around the injury and work with the injury and gently bring it back into movements. Not force it, not so that it hurts, but just to keep it moving, keep the blood flowing there, prevent it from seizing up, keep the motor patterns as they should be, avoid you know, tension in other areas. And if you do that, then you stand the best chance of recovery. So now I'm over here and I've got a brand new phone, which is cool. Also, a coffee now. And I have another question from someone else with a random jumble of letters for a name that I can't read, saying, what are some of your personal training goals? What are you working towards at the moment? And I've got a bunch. So if I had to pick one as my main one at the moment, I'm really still working on my handstand. I just enjoy handstand so much. And it's something that I think can unlock a lot of other cool movements and it teaches a lot in itself. So I can hold a handstand pretty well for you know a good minute, but I don't always get into the position where I can get into that. So you know it's like one in every four handstand attempts goes quite well. So I'd like to be able to do that more reliably. Also like to be able to get into it more gracefully. And I wanna be able to do more handstand push-ups. I can do about two before I fall over, sometimes just one. So yeah, I wanna work on that. That in turn means working on my shoulder mobility, which still could use improving. So I can get a bit straighter, a bit more core strength and proprioception. So yeah, it's a great journey is a handstand and that's why I recommend anyone to work on that. There are plenty of others though. I also want to improve my jump height in particular. That's something I'm focusing on at the moment. Running speed, I'm aware I need to improve my sprint techniques. That's something I'll be looking at more soon. I've been doing a lot of jabs and crosses lately. I'm still working on trying to improve my martial arts form. A lot of people say, why are you only jabbing and crossing when you're hitting the bag? That's just because I'm drilling those movements over and over again until I get them you know, how I want them. But I am starting to get to the point where I want to start incorporating kicks again. Not just because kicking in itself is cool, but because it you know, transfers to so many other things. Mobility, explosiveness, balance, all that good stuff. And again, it's just a lot of fun. I think everyone can benefit from kicking and generally balancing on one leg and swinging their other leg around. I'm working on mobility in general. In particular, I'd like to start working towards middle splits. Not necessarily to get the splits, but just a little bit more mobility in that area. And at the same time, I want to maintain and build on my strength. It'd be awesome if I could get back up to 150 kilograms in the bench press. That's not necessarily a huge focus of mine. I don't want to do it by doing lots of bench press. I'd just like to keep working on my strength and then see that transfer across, hopefully. But we'll see how that goes. And Tyson G says, what are some of your favorite recommended resources for fitness content, YouTube channels, books, etc." I'll do a video on the books in future, but just to answer the question about YouTubers, my favorite YouTube resources, I watch a lot of Athlean X. I think he's just straight up one of the best resources in terms of you know, good information. There's no drama with Jeff Cavalier. He gets straight to the point. I enjoy his interactions with um, Jesse. When it comes to biomechanics, he's one of the best guys to look at. He's just an absolute pro. And sometimes I have dreams that he's my dad. So that's not weird. And of course, JC Santana and the Institute of Human Performance, which are two different YouTube channels, but they come as a package. I love JC. I think he's one of the luminaries of functional training. Everything he says is challenging, but makes perfect sense. It makes you reevaluate your training, which I think is just so valuable. Highly, highly recommended. Obviously, also really like Jack's Blades channel. He's very similar to me in terms of the type of content that we cover. We like superhero inspired training, but I think as well, more than that, we both also really like training that's fun. We like to try and make sure nobody hurts themselves at the same time. And we both like combining different training styles with mobility and things. Obviously, I've got to give a shout out to James Linker from Shredded Sports Science, not only because he's been incredibly kind about my channel, but also because he is another one who genuinely has tons of decent information and just he's diligent when it comes to researching that. If you want a no BS review of a supplement or something like that, he's someone who's very straight up and honest. So I highly recommend his channel for that kind of research. Obviously, I love Grant Stevens' channel. He's a regular collaborator with me. We have the same appreciation for action films and that kind of visual style, but he also is just the Don when it comes to his speed and technique, and he's a great teacher. So I also watch Alpha Destiny. I like that he has so many out there ideas when it comes to training, and he's experimenting with different things all the time. Also, he is a physical specimen. The one finger pull-ups he does the huge amounts of weight he push up, the gigantic um, rep sets he does for push ups and things, just incredible. When it comes to kettlebells and club bells, I've got to give a shout out to Mark Wildman. I watch his channel an awful lot. You know, he's just again an expert in his field and he gives so many useful pieces of advice. I highly recommend it. When it comes to calisthenics, I love fitness FAQs, I love Tom Merrick, um, Cy Monster Strength, Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. All of these are fantastic resources. And another one I really like is Strength Side, and I also really like Saturno Movement. And when some people say, like, Adam, you can do some cool moves, I'm like, check out those guys. Uh, they can do some cool moves. 
and all of them go really in depth into how things work and you know the little tips for improving your posture or Ben Patrick knees over toes guys it's almost disingenuous to describe him as a YouTube channel he's more of a, a phenomenon a movement and I just think he's fantastic I always recommend his ideas on this channel because I mean they're thinking outside the box but the proof is in the pudding very much I also really like Squat University I think that's another fantastic resource one I highly recommend and they have tons of advice on how to improve your squat but also just movement in general and another collaborator, I really love Liam Ellis's parkour channel, I highly recommend it. He does a lot of shorts at the moment on mobility which are fantastic and a lot of, um, I think he calls them Think Tank Thursdays where he talks about the philosophy and movement behind parkour so highly recommend checking him out as well. I feel like I'm forgetting people so very sorry if I didn't mention you but yeah I watch a lot of fitness YouTube and I really think there's something to be learned from every channel even if you maybe think they come across as you know not your kind of person there's almost always something you can take from there. Janice Horster said, I know it's not your primary goal, but it'd be very interesting nonetheless. What is your current one rep max for squat, bench and deadlift? And to that, I say, yeah, I actually 100% genuinely do not know because I rarely go to the gym anymore. When I do, I don't have a spotter and I've usually got a list of things I want to accomplish. I can do 125 on the bench press. This is kilograms for, you know, a good four or five repetitions. So I can probably do about 140 kilograms as my one rep max, I would say. The best I ever did was just over 150 kilograms, so that's a kind of ballpark figure, but I looked a bit bigger then. It's funny how much stronger you need to be to lift an extra 10 kilograms. That's why I don't always think that, you know, it pays off the amount of work you have to put in once you get to that point. In terms of the deadlift, again, I've actually never even measured my one rep maximum on the deadlift. However, I know that I find lifting 100 kilograms off the ground very easy, and I have lifted over 150 kilograms, so I probably put my one rep max at something like 170, 180 kilograms. As for the squat, I know I'm pretty useless in this area. I don't particularly like squatting. It doesn't feel like a natural movement to me. I like squatting. I don't like squatting with a whole load of weight on my back. I much prefer goblet squats, squat jumps, that kind of thing, or even just getting into a resting squat. I don't think I can squat that much more than I can bench, which is embarrassing and all wrong. It's maybe about 150. So this is another area that I need to focus on and build towards, I'm aware. But you know, I'm of the opinion that if the exercise doesn't speak to you, you don't need to necessarily bang your head against the wall and keep doing it. For ages I felt like a fraud, like I had this pressure to do the big three lifts a lot. Then I realised, you know, there are plenty of other ways to get all those same benefits and, you know, if squatting was all you needed to be a super fast runner or a super high jumper, well then all these people in the gym who can squat a lot would be pro athletes and it just doesn't quite work like that. So. That's a takeaway, is don't feel any pressure to do any movement that doesn't massively speak to you. If you can find an alternative way to do it, that's perfectly good. Kalma says, My dream is to start a YouTube channel like yours. What is your main tip to achieve this? Congrats on half a million. So excited for all the content you'll be producing. Also, could you maybe even make a video on the stuff that you do to make your videos? Maybe a day in the life or something. I'd love to do that again in future. I haven't done it for a long time. And it's quite interesting now, I think, the behind the scenes stuff. My biggest tip for someone who wants to be successful on YouTube, not that I think I'm, you know, particularly the person to ask, seeing as it took me an awful long time to get to this point, but I will say that the most important thing is just consistency. It's very much like training in this regard. Like, you can talk about working out and you can read all the books and things, but it's never going to be just doing the workout, you know, every day. Or in this case, filming a video and putting it out once a week. If you just do that, you'll get better over time. It's not only about the fact that you gradually collect subscribers, it's also the fact that you're learning, you're improving, you get a little bit of money coming in and that, and that increases, but none of those things are gonna happen unless you put in the time and work. And it can be crushing at the start because you put all this effort into these videos, and no one comes and watches it, and you're feeling kind of self-conscious about it, and then it's years before you actually see any payoff and can you really do it? So I guess my other tip is to make sure you love doing it. Like I say, I do this not because I feel like I have to to do my job, I do it because I literally want to do it. I almost can't not do it. I, I'm just always thinking about getting outside and filming myself. I look at something, I think, well, that'd be cool to do a push up on. I should do that in my next video. You know, it like comes from within. And so I don't mind if it's not doing well and you need to feel the same way because it'll take a long time potentially before you start to get that feedback. And if you are feeling self-conscious and you don't think the work is good enough for whatever reason, then that's kind of the biggest hurdle you need to get over. You need to just put it out in whatever format you can in a week. If it takes you more than a week, then it's too complicated, just put it out in the format it is. If you're waiting for a better camera, don't, just do it on your phone. If you're waiting to be better at speaking, then don't, you'll get better by practicing. And this is like the fail fast approach, and it relates to every aspect of business. You need to be able to put something out in a good enough state to get the feedback to begin that loop. And so you also need a kind of job that you can do on the side that's not going to take up all your time. For me that was freelance writing, which I did for an awfully long time. 
you know, I just put out loads and loads of words. But yeah, you need some kind of job that has the flexibility to allow you to do this in the evenings without necessarily seeing that return. Find something you love, do it for the love, and don't you know, make up excuses not to upload every single week. It needs to be every single week. The last thing I'll say is, you know, do some research and find out what works in terms of thumbnails and titles and engagement. These are all things that, you know, I could do a lot better, but something I've learned recently is how important it is to get right to the point and to deliver value right at the beginning of your videos. Value can be anything. It could be a cool shot that's inspiring. It could be a really useful tip. But if you spend the first 10 minutes of your video welcoming people to the video and saying how they should subscribe and saying what you're going to be talking about in the video, then you've lost them. And YouTube really wants to see engagement. So it wants to see people watching to the end of the video. So you need to hit them fast with value. And I try and make sure that my videos have something cool, interesting, or helpful, like every few minutes so that you're staying engaged as much as possible. I think that's one of the things that I really try and do and I believe makes a big difference. Don't be that person who's like, you know, they just don't get it. So I'm gonna keep doing my thing, banging your head against the wall and no one's watching it. You need to find a way to make what you're saying, what you want to say, interesting to the widest audience possible. And that's something that I think I've been developing lately. And the last thing I'll say is remember that emotion sells and emotion is what makes people click. So I hope some of that is useful. Best of luck with your YouTube channel, by the way. It might take a long time, but it's so worth it. I highly recommend it to anybody. Stephen A says, if you could only use one piece of equipment for a year, what would you choose? What about one movement for a year? And that's another really good question. I think my one piece of equipment would probably have to be dip bars because I love advanced calisthenics, you know, handstand practice and things like that, which I could do on there, as well as planche training and dips, of course. But you can also do all the hanging underneath things like um, bodyweight rows, which I think are really important and really good for you, etc. And also it's just a fun tool for training. If I could only do one exercise, that's a difficult one because the exercise I would choose isn't one I'd recommend to the most people. The exercise I would choose is push-ups. I really like my fast explosive push-ups. They improve my strength and endurance. They improve my core. They make me more explosive. And I just enjoy doing them. You can pump out a bunch anywhere and you can really feel the benefits. You guys have heard on other videos the way I do it. I do it in a fast motion with relatively shorter range of motion, almost a concentric only fashion. So there's minimal recovery time necessary and I can just do them throughout the day. I love push-ups. They're simple, they're fun. And I think they're like the cornerstone of my own training. However, if I did that as my only form of exercise, I'd be sacrificing any kind of balance or functionality because of course I'd be all front heavy. So what I would recommend as one exercise that targets the most things probably, that would be the kettlebell clean and press, the cross body kettlebell clean and press, which I've talked about a little bit recently, where you're bending down in front of you, doing a little hip hinge and a slight squat, pulling the weight up from one side and then to the other side where you're gonna rack it and then pressing it overhead. So you've got a rotation, which I think is really important. You've got a hip hinge, but a rotation combined with a hip hinge, which is often how we actually pick up things in the real world. You've got a sort of curl when you're doing the kind of clean. You've got a press overhead, a vertical press, so you're training the shoulders and the triceps and the pecs as well. So it kind of does almost everything. There's a little bit of lat involvement when you're pulling it up. Yeah, it's a real bang for your buck movement, as I like to say. Um, of course, you can't do that though, because I just chose the dip bars as the only piece of equipment. So yeah, figure that one out. And yeah, I think that's enough questions for now. I think this has been recording now for quite a long time, 51 minutes. That's gonna be fun to edit. Um, I hope you found something useful and interesting here. I'll probably do another one of these, maybe at a million or maybe 750. We'll see um, how long it takes to get to there. Once again, I wanna say a huge thank you to all of you for all your support. Um, it really means the absolute world to me. Uh, if you like the kind of training that I talk about, then you can check out my ebook and training program down below in the description. That's Super Functional Training 2.0, over two hours of video tutorial, a massive ebook, and a training program designed to build multiple aspects of your fitness and performance all at once. And just a quick update, I'm still working on the Batman video for 2022. Sorry it's taken so long. Um, it's just because I'm pouring like everything into it. I want this to be really good this year. Um, it's also gonna be a little bit of a 500,000 celebration in its own right. But yeah, I've got some big surprises. I hope you guys are gonna really like it. So, so stay tuned for that one. And likewise, I'm still working on the montage of your guys' training. Thank you so much for sending that stuff in. The, the Batman stuff is just taking up all my free time at the moment because I'm really, like I say, trying to make it super extra good. Subscribe if you want more like this. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye for now.